How's it going? I'm here with another GM mode. The last time I asked you if we should make any moves, because we're just before the trade deadline, and there was one comment that really got me thinking. It was by uh, Gratz28. Thank you for making it. I spent more time than I'd like to admit last night trying to hash out a trade, and I think I got the perfect trade for us. The Arizona Coyotes acquired Derek Puglia and Jeff Zatkoff from Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh acquires Callum Booth, Michael Stone, and three uh, no-name guys just to make uh, the cap space work. Now, what does this do to our lines? Let me show you. Uh, I spent one time, and I'd like to admit, like I said, doing this take probably took me over an hour just going through all the defensemen in the league, but Derek Pouliot, an 88 overall defenseman, he's got medium elite potential. Him and Oliver Ekman Larson will tear it up together. We got the Vlasic Pickle, Ryan Ellis on the second line, and on the third line we got Ryan Sproul and John Moore. I think uh, this just solidified our defensive core for years to come. We still got Sean Day. Uh, he's in juniors actually right now. Uh, he's 84 overall, so next year he's gonna be he's gonna be able to just jump right in and be a great player for us. And in the minors, uh, we still got players like uh, Valiev, uh, Vanier. Maybe could crack the roster next year. Uh, we got a bunch of prospects. Uh, our defensive core is set for the future. Without a doubt, it is set. So, I think this will give us the edge to really make help us make a deep playoff run. Because I was looking at this, our team stats last time. I really didn't have too much faith in our team. Yes, we are doing good. But if you really take a close look at it, we're not high in goals for per game. We're actually one of the worst. Uh... There we are, under two and a half per game, and uh, it says we're uh, one of the best defensive teams, but at the same time, you look at our roster, and there's not too many defensive guys there, and if we're not scoring a whole lot, if we give up two goals, but we only score two goals, it means we're going into overtime, and who knows what could happen. But anyway, I think this trade that we just made really will solidify us for years to come and with that let's continue simulating we'll see how we do actually i want to make one note of something first i want to see how many points Derek pouliot has uh just so we can really see how he does with us because he was not a first line guy in pittsburgh uh 38 points in 61 games so we got to remember that and then we can see how he does with us in the final 20, 20 games? 20 games. All right, so let's simulate to the end of the season. And then we can see where we are in the standings and uh, the playoff tree. 5-4 win against Edmonton. That's what I'm talking about. Our defense wasn't solid that game. But we have enough offense to where we can score more than the other team. Player morale. Let's take a look at this. Derek Pouliot. Uh, he better prove me right. Uh, Jeff Zatkoff. Uh, he is just going to be scratched. He's got a year left on his contract. I'm not worried about him. He's just going to sit uh, on our bench, so it doesn't matter. Uh, welcome aboard. There we go. Alright, so far we are 2-1 having him. And oh my goodness, 7-1 against Vancouver. See, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the big factors why I made this trade uh, is uh, your comment, Gratz28. Uh, you said that we should go out and get a monster defense. But I'm sitting there thinking, like, why in the hell would I do that? We got a bunch of guys coming up. But your comment just really made me think. I was like, you know what? That is something that we need. Uh, we got Sean Day coming up, and yes, he is a fantastic defenseman. He's already 84 overall, and he's still in juniors, uh, which I really don't like. But he wasn't—he just wasn't good enough at the start of the season. But anyway, he's 84 overall now. 
Next season, it could be 87 or even higher. And I was just, I was just wondering, but you, you really made me think. And even if uh, Derek Puglia is not on the first line for the rest of his tenure here, if he's on the second line, he is a great second line defenseman. And that is something that we can really use. And having a good defensive core is something that helps teams win. Is it a, and it's a big reason why teams win. Let's see how we did. Uh, one, two, three, four. We lost four games since we got Derek Pouillot. So we went, uh, what, 16 and four after getting Derek Pouillot. That's, that actually made us get uh, first in the... Uh, Com Wait, did we get first in the conference? Or did we just clinch the division? Okay, yeah, just first in the division. I was just going to say... Yeah, okay. So a couple teams still got a game left, but we first in the con uh, in the division. Where am I going? Not the Central, the Pacific. First in the Pacific Division. All because we got Derek Pouillot. Again, I thought, oh my god, that was such a great trade for us. And our goals for per game, we won up .2 goals for per game in the final 20 games. That's just insane. That's an insane improvement uh, this late into the season. Really shows you how much better our offense is now. Uh, yeah. we Our offense just became so much better because that we're now like right in the middle of the pack for offense. And our defense... It's just as good as it was before, if not a little better. Uh, I think we have the makings of a deep playoff run right now in year three. All because of that trade. Uh, oh, I think our power play did get a little better. I was going to say, unfortunately, our power play didn't. But uh, we are somewhere in the middle of the pack, around 17%. But that's, that's definitely going up. Uh, so yeah, Derek Poyot just really makes our team just a whole lot better. Where are we at for penalty? Okay, we're still one of the worst in penalty kill, but that uh, that can be handled. <sighs> okay, uh, regular season is over. Come on. All right, so the playoff matchup should be set. Let's take a quick look at everybody's stats then, now that the season is over. And I'm really curious to see where Derek Puglia ended up. All right, so the Nuge was 68 and 82. That's a solid season, especially on the second line. Uh, Bo Bennett and Max Domi, uh, solid seasons. I wish Max Domi would have had a little better season, but you know what? That's perfectly fine. Uh, the team did really well, so I can't really complain too much. Uh, Oliver Ekman Larson, a great season. Derek Pouillot, um, what, he had 14 points in 20 games with us. That's great. Can't really complain there because he had 38 coming in and now he has 52. So he had an excellent 20 games with us. Uh, Tyler Johnson, I really wish he would have had a better um, season with us. I, will, I think I should move the Nuge up to the first line just because he's a two-way forward and the Nuge is a playmaker. So let me know if I should do that. That, hmm. Should I move Ryan Nugent Hopkins to the first line and move Tyler Johnson down to the second? I know we are a really good team, but having the Nuge on our first line could increase our scoring. So let me know if I should do that, because uh actually sounds pretty interesting. Uh, Mikel Bodker, not a great season. Did he do better than last year? Okay, he did do better than last year. He's still not a 20-goal scorer, which he hasn't been throughout his career. But I can't really complain. He was a plus 12 this year. Uh, best of his career. Uh, I wish he could get that shooting percentage up. But again, can't complain. Tobias Ryder, 20 goal scorer. That's great for him. Uh, Dylan Strom. He, uh, 41 points in 82 games. That's a point every two games. So, you know, that's not bad. Uh... 30 assists in his rookie year. Not bad. Ryan Ellis, 33 points. Henrik Samuelson, 29. He's going to be good for us. He's 86 overall right now because of morale. And he's on the third line. So, you know, I'm excited to see what he'll become. 
uh, and this is how the rest of the team looks. Let's take a quick look at Malcolm Subban. See how he did. I think he was the rock at the ba at the base of our team. Fantastic goalie. 2.23 goals against. You know, it's not bad. Could be a little better. He's not the best in the league, but he's certainly really good. 0.923 save percentage. Again, that's pretty good. Not the best, but uh, pretty good. Uh, oh, let's take a look around the league. Uh, for everybody else's points and see how we compare. The entire league, uh, who led the league in points? Alexander Ovechkin, 49 goals, 44 assists. Wow, he did really good. Look at that shot, though. Mid-90s, everything. Uh, Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Corey Perry, Backstrom, round out the top five. So, yeah, that's how points look. Yeah, we weren't even close uh, to having one of the top points. I mean, the Nuge had 68. Uh, he was a 20-goal scorer, so he'll be good for us. But yeah, wasn't even close to uh, cracking these top guys. Uh, let's take a look and see how uh, Malcolm Subban compares now. Although we didn't have one of the top goal scorers, I think we're a fairly deep goal-scoring team. So, uh... That's how that is. And uh, what, Subban, 35 wins. Now, if he'd been a starter on our team the entire year, he'd probably be a little higher. Um, but again, for his wins, he was really close uh, to being one of the highest. Uh, goals against average. Uh, Carol Veg Vigimelka? I can't pronounce that. 56 games played, so he was their starter. Oh, no, these are worst goals against. Oh, whoops, I thought those were the best. Okay, so the best was Kari Ramo with uh, 2.05. Uh, Cam Ward, where's Subban? Subban, like I said, not the best, but it's still pretty good. Among starters, I think he was in the he was in the top 10, but uh, he was like 6th. So, almost in the top 5. Uh, and say a percentage. Uh, where is Subban? Uh, Subban's a little bit down there. Uh, for starters, I would say t -t 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 he's in the top 10. So, you know what? That's it not too bad. Uh, definitely one of the better save percentages, but you know what? Uh... It's not the best, but again, it's not bad. Uh, those are the shutouts for the goalies. Carey Price led the league. I wonder where Subban was. So I didn't take a look at how many shutouts he had. Uh, Subban had three shutouts. Uh, that's not bad. Anyway, that's how everything looks. Ooh, we got to take a look at the playoff tree. We're facing Minnesota in the first round. I wish I could see who they had as the playoff favorite. But anyway, there's Dallas, Chicago... Winnipeg, Nashville, LA, Anaheim, and then you got Arizona and Minnesota finishing off the West. In the East, you got the uh, Ranger against Pittsburgh, who I actually took uh, Derek Pouli out from, so I'm curious to see how they'll do against the Rangers without one of their better defensemen. Uh, Washington against Ottawa, Tampa Bay against Montreal, and Toronto against Carolina. So that's how that looks. And uh, actually, you know, I want to take a look at... Uh, uh, t -t 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 John Moore's, uh, how he did for the season, because I wonder how he ended up doing in Pittsburgh. So I don't think they have too good of, uh, defensive depth. Um, uh, you know, I gotta take a look just at defense, so I can see, uh, the defensemen are. Uh, Latang Olimata, uh, oh, it was Michael Stone, excuse me. Michael Stone finished with eight points. It was better than the rest of their defensemen, but they do not have much depth. So he is playing second line time there. That's really good for him, I guess, considering he is a top six defenseman. But you know what? He'll have more opportunity to play in Pittsburgh than he will here in Arizona. So anyways, that's how that looks. We're in the playoffs. We're going to go up against uh, the Minnesota Wild in the first round. But until then, I'll see you.